Okay, so what is cotangent equal? So we'll just go through one at a time. So what is cot cotangent equal? Cotangent equals what divided by what? So let me, let me back up. <clears throat> when you're simplifying and verifying, it is helpful to rewrite in terms of sine and cosine. There really is no one right way to simplify and verify. But in the beginning, oftentimes, teachers will say, just start off by rewriting things in terms of sine and cosine. Okay, so what is cotangent equal in terms of sine and cosine? If you're not sure, look at the quotient identities that's on the one side of your purple sheet if you don't remember it by heart. All right, so I'm going to rewrite that numerator as cosine divided by sine. And that's divided by cosecant. And what is cosecant? What's the uh, reciprocal identity of cosecant? Not just sine, but 1 over Sign, right? Look at your reciprocal identities. Look in that middle column of your paper. Cosecant is one over sine. So I'm going to just rewrite that as one over sine. Oh, I should put the thetas back. Sorry, I always forget that. Okay, how do you divide fractions? Keep, change, flip. So let's do that. So let's keep. And then I'm going to change this to multiplication and flip the second one. And what happens, what do you think is going to happen here in this example with the sign? Yeah. So what's my final answer going to simplify down to? Uh, Just cosine. So cotangent divided by cosecant is equal to cosine. Okay, go ahead and copy down the second one if you haven't already. That one's pretty simple. But when you multiply two sisters, you get one. Okay, secant and cosine are sisters. So when you multiply two things that are reciprocal, you get one. So when I take the secant, and I write this as the reciprocal identity, that becomes one over cosine theta. And that's multiplied by the cosine, which again, is just going to give you one. The answer is one. All right, go ahead and try to do uh, number three. Write it in terms of sine and cosine. Do your keep change flip and see if you can figure out what it equals.
So tangent equals sine over cosine. Secant is one over cosine. When you divide two fractions, you do keep change flip. So I kept sine over cosine and I flipped the one over cosine. Cosine canceled out and I left. I was left with sine. Who had sine as their final answer? Okay. All right, any questions about how we did that one? All right. So this, they just kind of build with difficulty a little bit. All right, go ahead and copy down. I would just again do, let's just copy down one at a time. So take a moment and copy down this example. So what is that Pythagorean? What's the first Pythagorean identity say? Sine squared plus cosine squared equals what? Equals one. So anytime you see a sine squared plus cosine squared, it equals one. So this equals one. That's just the Pythagorean theorem. So that becomes one over cosine and what is one over cosine equal to? Seek it. So you keep going until you run out of things to do. So I'm here, like one over cosine can change, so we're gonna leave it as seek it. That's your final answer. All right, let's look at the one that we took away. Go ahead and copy that one down. So I think that it's beneficial to work with the numerator first. Let's work with this first. So sine of x plus tangent, and how can I rewrite tangent? Tangent equals what over what? Sine over cosine. So I have to add sine plus sine over cosine. In order to add fractions, what do you have to have? A common denominator, good. So what do I need to multiply this fraction by? Cosine. So I have to multiply this fraction by cosine. which is going to change it to sine x cosine x over cosine plus sine over cosine. And now that you have a common denominator, you can write it as a single fraction. So this is the numerator right here. So I'm just gonna leave that alone and do the same thing with my denominator. So I went as far as I could go. Well, actually there's one more thing we could do with our numerator. What could I do with the numerator? Square. Well, there's nothing squared. Well, not can't, well, okay. So you can't cancel out the cosine but you can factor out a sign. So let's factor out the sign.
And when I factor out the side, I'm left with a cosine plus one all over cosine. Okay, so now we're gonna leave that alone. Now let's do our denominator and see what happens with that. Okay, so let's go ahead and do our denominator. For our denominator, I'm gonna just write this up here. So the denominator is one plus secant. Secant can be written as what? One over cosine. So again, we need a common denominator, which means we have to multiply. So I'm just leaving this alone right now. I think it's easier to kind of split the fraction, kind of take the top part, simplify that as far as you can. Now let's look at our denominator. Let's see what this looks like. Then we'll do our keep chain slip. Okay, so we have to have a common denominator. So I'm going to put this over 1. And let's multiply this top and bottom by the cosine of x. So what I end up having is cosine plus 1 over cosine. Oh yeah, that, that was helpful. Okay. So this is my denominator. So now we can see a lot is going to cancel. So let's go ahead and take our numerator. So I'm gonna take the red box, keep that, and flip the second one, which is the purple box. So I'll write that in the middle in blue. So my keep change flip is going to be sine x, and then cosine x plus one, all over cosine. Keep that, change to multiplication, and flip what you have here. And when I flip this one, it becomes cosine over cosine x plus one. So I can see a lot that's going to cancel. The first thing that's going to cancel is cosine. And the second thing that cancels is cosine x plus 1. Leaving me with just what as my final answer? Sine. And it's upstairs, so I don't, I don't have to flip it to a cosecant because it's upstairs. So my final answer is just sine. There is no magic trick to these. This is truly, like, that's why I'm saying math is, a spec is not a spectator sport. You have to just practice, and the more you practice with it, the more comfortable you get with it. I mean, I, I'm sure, like, it, any math teacher will tell you when they first started learning it, you just keep, you keep, you try stuff, see if that helps. If it doesn't help, then you back up and try something different. But I find it helpful to write things in terms of sine and cosine. But you have to try to do, to uh, work through it. Now, I, do, I need to finish updating the homework. I have that updated. The first homework assignment, and I, I can't remember what number we're on right now, is out the book. So it is out the book, and then we have some worksheets. But the, the next homework assignment is coming from the book. Okay. Let's go ahead and copy down this next one here. And again, you're going to do the same thing. Start by figuring out. Now, tangent times cotangent would be 1 because they're sisters. But tangent plus cotangent is not 1. You need to write that in terms of sine and cosine and get a common denominator. Okay, so that's not that's different than multiplying. Tangent times cotangent, well that would just be one, that's simple. But tangent plus cotangent, you need a common denominator. So 
So I'm going to work across this time, actually. So tangent is sine over cosine. And cotangent is cosine over sine. So in order to get a common denominator, I have to multiply this fraction by sine. And the second fraction I have to multiply by cosine. So let me just explain this in terms of numbers. If you had one fourth plus one fifth, you would multiply this fraction by the five and this fraction by the four. I'm doing the exact same thing. So this fraction I had to multiply by sine and this fraction I had to multiply by cosine which is going to give me, let me keep walking straight across, I think that's easier, which gives me sine squared plus cosine squared, because sine times sine is sine squared, cosine times cosine is cosine squared, and that's all over sine cosine. All right, any ideas? What do you think I'm gonna do now? There is something on your purple sheet that will help you. The numerator, is equal to one. numerator is one because that's the Pythagorean identity. So now we have one over sine cosine. Okay, I'm gonna pause there and let's look at our denominator see what we can do with that. Cosecant is the same as one, and this, even if it's square, you could still, you, you can still do this with a square. So one over cosecant squared is the same as one over sine squared. And I think that sometimes for students, it might help you to write it twice because one over sine squared means you have two signs. So that was pretty easy. We didn't have to do a lot for that one. So now let's go ahead and multiply. So I'm going to keep, keep this one. This is the numerator. This is my denominator. So I'm going to do a keep, change, flip. So I want you to take this and multiply it by the reciprocal of your denominator. So keep that as one over sine cosine, and we're multiplying it by sine sine. So I have one over sine cosine, and I'm multiplying that by sine sine over one. Okay, what can I cancel out? I can cancel out the ones. Can I cancel out anything else? Yeah, we can cancel out one of the signs. Which is going to leave me with what on top? And what's going to be left on the bottom? And what is sine divided by cosine? And that would be your final answer. Simplifying might be a little bit harder than verifying because when you verify, you already know the end game. So you're just trying to get the left side to match the right side. When you simplify, we don't really know what we're trying to get to. We just keep working until we run out of stuff to do. So that might be a little bit harder to start with. All right, let's do our last question for today. Go ahead and copy this one down, and we will end there.
So this has some algebra in there. So I need to have a common denominator, which means I have to multiply this fraction by one plus cosine. Beta is just a variable. If you don't wanna use it, you can just always stick with X, that's fine. But beta is just a Greek letter. So I have to multiply this fraction by one plus cosine beta. And this fraction I'm gonna multiply by one minus cosine beta. Okay, so no, it's not. So like if you have fractions, so let's say you have one plus one, one over four and one over five. I would have to multiply this fraction by the five, right? And this fraction by the four. What, what would be my common denominator for four and five? 20. So I wouldn't multiply, to get 20, I wouldn't multiply this by four and this by five. That's not gonna work, right? Yeah. So, because that would be a 16 and a 25. So I have to multiply that side by what it doesn't have. Okay. So I'm multiplying this side by what it doesn't have, right? And this side by what, by, by what it doesn't have to get a common denominator, okay? I always think it's easier to kind of go back to this so you can kind of just remember how to add fractions because, you know, we don't, we, we don't really do that a lot. So that's why we need a common denominator. Okay, so here's the algebra involved, and I'm really hoping that you guys recognize this, but this is the difference of two squares. Anytime you multiply the same thing with opposite signs in the middle, that's the difference of two squares, okay? So I automatically know that this is gonna be one minus cosine squared beta, but you may not know that, so let's go ahead and let's just make a box so you can see it. But this is a pattern that is that you do need to be familiarized with if you take one minus cosine beta and one plus cosine beta, you're gonna have a one in this square, a negative cosine beta in this square, a positive cosine beta in this squared, and a negative cosine squared beta. These cancel, so you're only left with one minus cosine squared. So what I have left is I have one plus cosine beta, because I'm multiplying this fraction. So when I multiply this fraction, I get one plus cosine beta over one minus cosine squared beta plus when I multiply this fraction, I have one minus cosine beta over one minus cosine squared beta. And when you have a common denominator, you can write it as a single fraction. So I'll give you a second. So I don't wanna leave anybody behind. This is our last one. So in the numerator, I have, I'm just gonna rewrite this as one fraction. Because again, going back to what, what we were doing on this side, when you have a common denominator, we bring it together. So like this would be four plus five, it would be nine over 20. All right, so this is where we are right here. But some stuff can happen in the, in the numerator. This is a really common question that you'll see. You definitely will see. It may not be one minus cosine. It could be one minus sine, one minus tangent. You know, it's just, it's a really common thing to see in trig. But over here, what can simplify upstairs? Anything, can I cross out anything up here? Cause I see something I can get rid of. Well, you can't get rid of the whole thing, but notice that you have a positive cosine and a negative cosine. 
You see that? They cancel. They will cancel because one is positive and one is negative. It's like a positive five and a negative five. They will cancel. The one and the one, they're not opposite. Those don't cancel. The one and the one, when I add one and one together, what do I get? Because they're both positive. So what would I get? Two. But the cosines go away. So I'm left with two over one minus cosine squared beta. Okay, now I want you to look at your purple sheet. This is a variation of the Pythagorean identity. See if you can find that and tell me what that equals. This is on the side that you have to have memorized. It's on the side with the basics. Maybe you should write on that side basics. Need to know, memorize. That side, need to know. Need to know that. Okay, so now go down to the middle where it says variations, and I want you to tell me when you see there is a one minus cosine squared. It, does, it says theta, but you can use any variable. But what does one minus cosine squared? That comes from the Pythagorean identity. Sine squared. So one minus cosine squared is equal to sine squared. And sine squared, if I move it upstairs, it becomes the opposite. So if I take this and move it up, it becomes the sister. So my final answer is two cosecant squared. Oh, I changed it to theta. It should be a beta, but I, I don't really, you know, I wouldn't take off for that because it's just a variable. That is my final answer.